Lesson 42, Jesus is Arrested. In today's lesson, we will learn about the treachery and betrayal of Jesus by Judas and Peter's denial of even knowing Jesus. It is sad to see how wickedly man treated Jesus, who only came to share God's love with humanity, especially when we see even his close friends fail him. But even in the midst of such hopeless rebellion and sin, we find one person who honored Jesus. A woman took some costly oil of spikenard and anointed Jesus with it. Some of the disciples were upset by this and thought the oil could have been sold and the money given to the poor. But Jesus defends the actions of the woman. He explains that she had honored him and done this in preparation for his burial. He also said that, what this woman did would be remembered wherever the gospel would be preached. How precious to Jesus are the acts of kindness we do for him, but how misunderstood by carnal minds. Jesus and his disciples met to celebrate the Passover meal, and while they were eating together, Jesus informs them that one of them would betray him, and they were all wondering who it could be. Jesus then says it would be better if the betrayer had never been born. They did not know then who the betrayer was, but we now know that it was Judas. Those who so knowingly and openly rebel against Christ can only look forward to God's severe judgment. Jesus then institutes the Lord's Supper, where the bread and wine are to be taken in remembrance of Jesus' sacrifice for us. This unique meal is a wonderful way for believers to reflect upon Jesus' love for us and to draw near to him in worship. A church that wishes to please the Lord will be careful to observe the Lord's Supper regularly and solemnly. Unfortunately today many Christians have not seen the significance of this simple remembrance meal and it is relegated to a short ritual tagged on to a preaching service. The New Testament would show us that this was the central meeting of the believers and their regular practice. After the Lord's Supper was ended, Jesus and his disciples went to the Mount of Olives. And Jesus tells all of his disciples how they would fail him and scatter. No one wanted to believe this and Peter tries to promise his loyalty at all cost. Such is the weakness and fear of men, who speak courageous words but when put to the test, tremble in fear. Many are bold in church to declare they are a Christian, but then around their unbelieving friends they deny they know Christ through their ungodly behavior. In the garden Jesus prays for the cup of judgment to be taken from him, but submits to the will of God. Jesus would look for any other possible answer than going to the cross and suffer the wrath of God against our sin but there was no other way but the cross, and he surrendered his will to this horrible and shameful death. After Jesus made his prayers, and in the dark of the night, soldiers came with Judas leading them. When they arrested Jesus, there is some immediate resistance, and one of the high priest's servants lost his ear. Jesus allowed these men to take him, but asked that his disciples go free. The disciples then forsook him and fled into the darkness. It is a remarkable thing to see Jesus allowing men to bind him and lead him away to their mock trial. Jesus had all power and could have blinded them all or sent down fire upon them or had an angel slay them all, but he chose to surrender himself to sinful men, the creatures he had made and given life to. What amazing grace our Lord demonstrates to all of us. When questioned by the high priest, Jesus remains silent, but when he is asked directly if he is the Christ, he confirms this to be so. This infuriated the priest and those gathered, and they spit upon him and mocked him and blindfolded him and struck him on the face, asking him to prophesy who struck him. It is remarkable how these supposed religious, God-fearing men could act with such hatred and viciousness. We can only conclude that it was Satan who was driving them in their mad rage against Jesus. 
While Jesus is undergoing this trial, Peter had tried to slip into the courtyard unnoticed and warmed himself by the fire. However, some recognized him as one of the disciples. But Peter kept denying their charges. At last the rooster crowed and Peter remembered the words of Jesus, and in conviction and sorrow he went out and wept bitterly. As we consider how unjustly and wickedly men treated Jesus, we ought to ask ourselves how we have responded to Jesus. Have we pushed Jesus out of our lives because we do not want any threat to our enjoyment of sin? Have we denied him by our actions and words when we are fearful and want to conform to the world? Have we betrayed him by cooperating with God's enemies? We all need to search our hearts and realize that before God we are all guilty of the sins that led Jesus to the cross. Although men bound him, arrested him, tried him, and eventually crucified him, it was his will to die for mankind. He would have never been taken by wicked men unless God allowed it. Jesus loves us that much that he was willing to be the sacrificial lamb that paid the penalty for all of our sin, even for his friends that left him that night when he was arrested. How often we have failed him, and yet he never fails us. Trust him today as your Savior, for that is the reason he submitted himself to the cross. And Jesus said, I am and ye shall see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of power and coming with the clouds of heaven. Mark chapter 14 verse 62